Western Ganga was an important ruling dynasty of ancient Karnataka in India which lasted from about 350 to 1000 CE. They are known as Western Gangas to distinguish them from the Eastern Gangas who in later centuries ruled over Kalinga modern Odisha. The general belief is that the Western Gangas began their rule during a time when multiple native clans asserted their freedom due to the weakening of the Pallava Empire in South India, a geo-political event sometimes attributed to the southern conquests of Samudra Gupta. The Western Ganga sovereignty lasted from about 350 to 550 CE, initially ruling from Kolar and later, moving their capital to Talakadu on the banks of the Kaveri River in modern Mysore district. After the rise of the imperial Chalukyas of Badami, the Gangas accepted Chalukya overlordship and fought for the cause of their overlords against the Pallavas of Kanchi. The Chalukyas were replaced by the Rashtrakutas of Manyaheta in 753 CE as the dominant power in the Deccan. After a century of struggle for autonomy, the Western Gangas finally accepted Rashtrakuta overlordship and successfully fought alongside them against their foes, the Chola dynasty of Tanjavur. In the late 10th century, north of Tungabhadra River, the Rashtrakutas were replaced by the emerging western Chalukya Empire and the Chola dynasty saw renewed power south of the Kaveri River. The defeat of the western Gangas by Cholas around 1000 resulted in the end of the Ganga influence over the region. Though territorially a small kingdom, the western Ganga contribution to polity, culture and literature of the modern South Karnataka region is considered important. The Western Ganga kings showed benevolent tolerance to all faiths but are most famous for their patronage toward Jainism resulting in the construction of monuments in places such as Shravanabelagola and Kambadahali. The kings of this dynasty encouraged the fine arts due to which literature in Kannada and Sanskrit flourished. Chavundaraya's writing, Chavundaraya Purana of 978 CE, is an important work in Kannada prose. Many classics were written on various subjects ranging from religion to elephant management. History Multiple theories have been proposed regarding the ancestry of the founders of the Western Ganga dynasty prior to the 4th century. Some mythical accounts point to a northern origin, while theories based on epigraphy suggest a southern origin. Historians who propose the southern origin have further debated whether the early petty chieftains of the clan prior to their rise to power were natives of the southern districts of modern Karnataka, the Kongu region in modern Tamil Nadu or of the southern districts of modern Andhra Pradesh. These regions encompass an area of the southern Deccan where the three modern states merge geographically. It is theorized that the Gangas may have taken advantage of the confusion caused by the invasion of southern India by the northern king Samudra Gupta prior to 350, and carved out a kingdom for themselves. The area they controlled was called Gangavadi and included regions of the modern districts of Mysore, Hassan Chamarajanagar, Tumkur, Kolar, Mandya and Bangalore in Karnataka state. At times, they also controlled some areas in modern Tamil Nadu Kongu region starting from the 6th century rule of King Avanita and Andhra Pradesh Ananthpur region starting from the middle of the 5th century. The founding king of the dynasty was Konganivarma Madhava who made Kolar his capital around 350 and ruled for about 20 years. By the time of Harivarma in 390, the Gangas had consolidated their kingdom with Talakad as their capital. Their move from the early capital Kolar may have been a strategic one with the intention of containing the growing Kadamba power. By 430 they had consolidated their eastern territories comprising modern Bangalore, Kolar and Tumkur districts and by 470 they had gained control over Kongu region in modern Tamil Nadu, Sendraka modern Chikamagaluru and Bailur, Punata and Panata regions comprising modern Hegadidavanakot and Nanjangud in modern Karnataka. In 529, King Durvinita ascended the throne after waging a war with his younger brother who was favoured by his father, King Avanita. Some accounts suggest that in this power struggle, the Pallavas of Kanchi supported Avanita's choice of heir and the Badami Chalukya King Vijayaditya supported his father-in-law, Durvinita. From the inscriptions it is known that these battles were fought in Tandimandalam and Kongu regions northern Tamil Nadu, prompting historians to suggest that Durvinita fought the Pallavas successfully. Considered the most successful of the Ganga kings, Durvinita was well versed in arts such as music, dance, Ayurveda and taming wild elephants. 
Some inscriptions sing paeans to him by comparing him to Yudhishthira and Manu, figures from Hindu mythology known for their wisdom and fairness. Politically, the Gangas were feudatories and close allies who also shared matrimonial relations with the Chalukyas. This is attested by inscriptions which describe their joint campaigns against their arch enemy, the Pallavas of Kanchi. From the year 725 onwards, the Gangavadi territories came to be called as the Gangavadi 96000. Shanavati Sahasra Vishaya comprising the eastern and western provinces of modern South Karnataka. King Sripurusha fought the Pallava king Nandivarman Pallavamala successfully, bringing Penkulakatai in North Arkot under his control temporarily for which he earned the title Permanati. A contest with the Pandyas of Madurai over control of Kongu region ended in a Ganga defeat, but a matrimony between a Ganga princess and Rajasima Pandya's son brought peace helping the Gangas retain control over the contested region. In 753, when the Rashtrakutas replaced the Badami Shalukas as the dominant force in the Deccan, the Gangas offered stiff resistance for about a century. King Shivamara II is mostly known for his wars with the Rashtrakuta Dhruva Dharavarsha, his subsequent defeat and imprisonment, his release from prison and eventually his death on the battlefield. The Ganga resistance continued through the reign of Rashtrakuta Govinda III and by 819, a Ganga resurgence gained them partial control over Gangavadi under King Rachamala. Seeing the futility of waging war with the western Ganga, Rashtrakuta Amogavarsha I gave his daughter Chandrabalabi in marriage to Ganga Prince Budiga I, son of King Araganga Nitamarga. The Gangas thereafter became staunch allies of the Rashtrakutas, a position they maintained till the end of the Rashtrakuta dynasty of Manyaheta. After an uneventful period, Budiga II ascended the throne in 938 with the help of Rashtrakuta Amogavarsha III, whose daughter he married. He helped the Rashtrakutas win decisive victories in Tamilakam in the Battle of Takolam against the Chola dynasty. With this victory, the Rashtrakutas took control of modern northern Tamil Nadu. In return for their valour, the Gangas were awarded extensive territories in the Tungabhadra River Valley. King Marasimha II who came to power in 963 aided the Rashtrakutas in victories against the Gurhara Pratihara King Lala and the Paramara kings of Malwa in central India. Chavundaraya, a minister in the Western Ganga court was a valiant commander, able administrator and an accomplished poet in Kannada and Sanskrit. He served King Marasimha II and his successors ably and helped King Rachamala IV suppress a civil war in 975. Towards the end of the 10th century, the Rashtrakutas had been supplanted by the Western Chalukya Empire in Manyaheta. In the south, the Chola dynasty who were seeing a resurgence of power under Rajaraja Chola I conquered Gangavadi around the year 1000, bringing the western Ganga dynasty to an end. Thereafter, large areas of South Karnataka region came under Chola control for about a century. Administration The Western Ganga administration was influenced by principles stated in the ancient text Arthashastra. The Prahe Gavundas mentioned in the Ganga records held responsibilities similar to those of the village elders mentioned by Kautilya. Succession to the throne was hereditary but there were instances when this was overlooked. The kingdom was divided into Rashtra district and further into Visaya consisting of possibly 1,000 villages and Desa. From the 8th century, the Sanskrit term Visaya was replaced by the Kannada term Nadu. Examples of this change are Sindanadu 8000 and Punanadu 6000, with scholars differing about the significance of the numerical suffix. They opine that it was either the revenue yield of the division computed in cash terms or the number of fighting men in that division or the number of revenue paying hamlets in that division or the number of villages included in that territory. Inscriptions have revealed several important administrative designations such as Prime Minister Sarvadakari, Treasurer Shribandari, Foreign Minister Sandhivargrahi, and Chief Minister Mahapradana. All of these positions came with an additional title of Commander Dandanayaka. Other designations were Royal Steward Manevergate, Master of Robes Mahapasaida, Commander of Elephant Corps Commander of Cavalry etc. In the Royal House, Niyogas oversaw palace administration, royal clothing and jewellery etc. and the Padiara were responsible for court ceremonies including door keeping and protocol. Officials at the local level were the Purgade, Nadabhava, Nalagamiga, Prabhu and Gavunda. 
The Purgades were superintendents from all social classes such as artisans, goldsmiths, blacksmiths etc. The Purgades dealing with the royal household were called Manipurgade house superintendent and those who collected tolls were called Sunka Vergades. The Nadabovas were accountants and tax collectors at the Nadu level and sometimes functioned as scribes. The Nalagamigas were officers who organized and maintained defense at the Nadu level. The Prabhu constituted a group of elite people drawn together to witness land grants and demarcation of land boundaries. The Gavundas who appear most often in inscriptions were the backbone of medieval polity of the southern Karnataka region. They were landlords and local elite whom the state utilized their services to collect taxes, maintain records of landownership, bear witness to grants and transactions and even raise militia when required. Inscriptions that specify land grants, rights and ownership were descriptive of the boundaries of demarcation using natural features such as rivers, streams, water channels, hillocks, large boulders, layout of the village, location of forts coat if any in the proximity, irrigation canals, temples, tanks and even shrubs and large trees. Also included was the type of soil, the crops meant to be grown and tanks or wells to be excavated for irrigation. Inscriptions mention wetland, cultivable land, forest and wasteland. There are numerous references to hamlets Pali belonging to the hunter communities who resided in them Bedapali. From the 6th century onwards, the inscriptions refer to feudal lords by the title Arasa. The Arasas were either Brahmins or from tribal background who controlled hereditary territories paying periodic tribute to the king. The Velavali who were loyal bodyguards of the royalty were fierce warriors under oath They moved with the royal family and were expected to fight for the master and be willing to lay down their lives in the process. If the king died, the Velavali were required to self-immolate on the funeral pyre of the master. Economy The Gangavadi region consisted of the Malnad region, the plains Bialusime, and the semi-Malnad with lower elevation and rolling hills. The main crops of the Malnad region were paddy, beetle leaves, cardamom and pepper and the semi-Malnad region with its lower altitude produced rice, millets such as ragi and corn, pulses, oilseeds and it was also the base for cattle farming. The plains to the east were the flat lands fed by Kaveri, Tungabhadra and Vedavati rivers where cultivations of sugarcane, paddy, coconut, areca nut tata, beetle leaves, plantain and flowers were common. Sources of irrigation were excavated tanks, wells, natural ponds and water bodies in the catchment area of dams Inscriptions attesting to irrigation of previously uncultivated lands seem to indicate an expanding agrarian community. Soil types mentioned in records are black soil in the Sinda 8000 territory and to red soil. Cultivated land was of three types wet land, dry land, and to a lesser extent garden land, with paddy being the dominant crop of the region. Wet lands were called Kalani, Gald, near Manu, or near Panya, and was specifically used to denote paddy land requiring standing water. The fact that pastoral economies were spread throughout Gangavadi region comes from references to cowherds in many inscriptions. The terms Gosahasra a thousand cows, Gasara owner of cows, Gosasi donor of cows, Goiti cowherdess, Gozasa protector of cows attest to this. Inscriptions indicate ownership of cows may have been as important as cultivable land and that there may have existed a social hierarchy based on this. Inscriptions mention cattle raids attesting to the importance of the pastoral economy, destructive raids, assaults on women abduction of women by betas hunter tribes, all of which indicate the existing militarism of the age. Lands that were exempt from taxes were called manya and sometimes consisted of several villages. They were granted by local chieftains without any reference to the overlord, indicating a decentralized economy. These lands, often given to heroes who perished in the line of duty were called Balavriti or Kalnad. When such a grant was made for the maintenance of temples at the time of consecration, it was called Talavriti. Some types of taxes on income were Kara or Anthakara internal taxes, Yukkota gifts due to the king, Haranya cash payments, and Salika tolls and duties on imported items. Taxes were collected from those who held the right to cultivate land, even if the land was not actually cultivated. Sadaya was a local tax levied on agriculture and Patondi was a tax levied on merchandise by the local feudal ruler. Based on context, Patondi also meant one-tenth, Adalavi meant one-fifth and Elalavi meant one-seventh. 
Manadare literally meant land tax and was levied together with shepherd's tax payable to the chief of shepherds. Baga meant a portion or share of the produce from land or the land area itself. Minor taxes such as kiradere due to the landlords and samathadir raised by the army officers or samantha are mentioned. In addition to taxes for maintenance of the local officers' retinue, villages were obligated to feed armies on the march to and from battles. Bituvada or niravari taxes comprised usually of a percentage of the produce and was collected for constructing irrigation tanks. Culture Religion The Western Gangas gave patronage to all the major religions of the time, Jainism and the Hindu sects of Shaivism, Vedic Brahmanism and Vaishnavism. However scholars have argued that not all Gangas kings may have given equal priority to all the faiths. Some historians believe that the Gangas were ardent Jains. However, inscriptions contradict this by providing references to Kalamakas, staunch Shaiva ascetics, Pasupadas and Lokayatas, followers of Pasupatha doctrine, who flourished in Gangavadi, indicating that Shaivism was also popular. King Madhava and Hariverma were devoted to cows and Brahmins. King Vishnugopa was a devout Vaishnava. Madhava the Thirds and Avanitas inscriptions describe lavish endowments to Jain orders and temples, and King Durvinita performed Vedic sacrifices, prompting historians to claim he was a Hindu. Jainism became popular in the dynasty in the 8th century when the ruler King Shivamara I constructed numerous Jain basadas. King Buddhaga II and Minister Chavundaraya were staunch Jains which is evident from the construction of the Gomateshwara monolith. Jains worshipped the 24 Tirthankars Jinas, whose images were consecrated in their temples. The worship of the footprint of spiritual leaders such as those of Bhadrabahu in Shravanabelagola from the 10th century is considered a parallel to Buddhism. Some Brahmanical influences are seen in the consecration of the Gomateshwara monolith which is the statue of Bahabali, the son of Tirthankar Adinatha just as Hindus worshipped the sons of Shiva. The worship of subordinate deities such as Yaksa and Yaksi, earlier considered as mere attendants of the Tirthankars was seen from the 7th century to the 12th century. Vedic Brahmanism was popular in the 6th and 7th centuries when inscriptions refer to grants made to Shrotriya Brahmins. These inscriptions also describe the Gotra lineage affiliation to royal families and their adherence of such Vedic rituals as Asvamedha horse sacrifice and Haranyagarbha. Brahmins and kings enjoyed a mutually beneficial relationship. Rituals performed by the Brahmins gave legitimacy to kings and the land grants made by kings to Brahmins elevated them in society to the level of wealthy landowners. Vaishnavism however maintained a low profile and not many inscriptions describe grants towards its cause. Some Vaishnava temples were built by the Gangas such as the Narayanaswami temples at Nanjangud, Sator and Hangala in modern Mysore district. The deity Vishnu was depicted with four arms holding a conch Sankha, discus Kakra, mace Gada, and lotus Padma. .From the beginning of the 8th century, patronage to Shaivism increased in every section of the society, the landed elite, landlords, assemblies Samaya, schools of learning Agraharas, and minor ruling families such as the Bana, Nolamba and Chalukya clans. The Shaiva temples contained a Shiva Linga phallus in the Sanctum Sanctorum along with images of the Mother Goddess, Surya sun god and Nandi a bull and attendant of Shiva which was normally enshrined in a separate pavilion facing the sanctum. The Linga was man-made and in some cases had etchings of Ganapati son of Shiva and Parvati consort and wife of Shiva on it. Due to the vigorous efforts of priests and ascetics, Shaiva monastic orders flourished in many places such as Nandi Hills, Avani and Hebada in modern Kolar district. <laughs> <laughs> Society The Western Ganga Society in many ways reflected the emerging religious, political and cultural developments of those times. Women became active in local administration because Ganga kings distributed territorial responsibility to their queens such as the feudal queen Parabhaya Arasi of Kundator and the queens of King Sripurusha, Buddhaga II and feudal king Pramadi. Inheritance of fiscal and administrative responsibility by the son-in-law, the wife or by the daughter is evident. 
The position of Prime Minister of King Aragonga II and position of Nalgavunda local landlord bestowed upon Jakiabi, the wife of a fallen hero are examples. When Jakiabi took to asceticism, her daughter inherited the position. The Devadasi system sul or courtesan in temples was prevalent and was modelled after the structures in the royal palace. Contemporaneous literature such as Vidaradhan makes a mention of the chief queen Durrani Mahadevi accompanied by lower ranking queens Arisirgal and courtesans of the women's royal quarter Pendarasada Suliyargal. Some of the courtesans and concubines employed in the harem of the kings and chieftains were well respected, examples being Nandava at whose instance a local chief made land grant to a Jain temple. Education in the royal family was closely supervised and included such subjects as political science, elephant and horse riding, archery, medicine, poetry, grammar, drama, literature, dance, singing and use of musical instruments. Brahmins enjoyed an influential position in society and were exempt from certain taxes and customs due on land. In turn they managed public affairs such as teaching, local judiciary, functioned as trustees and bankers, managed schools, temples, irrigation tanks, rest houses, collected taxes due from villages and raised money from public subscriptions, by virtue of a Hindu belief that killing of a Brahmin was a sin, capital punishment was not applicable to them. Upper caste Kshatriyas Satshatriya were also exempt from capital punishment due to their higher position in the caste system. Severe crimes committed were punishable by the severing of a foot or hand. Contemporary literary sources reveal up to ten castes in the Hindu caste system, three among Kshatriya, three among Brahmin, two among Vaishya and two among Shudras. Family laws permitted a wife or daughter or surviving relatives of a deceased person to claim properties such as his home, land, grain, money etc. if there were no male heirs. If no claimants to the property existed, the state took possession of these properties as dharmadeya charitable asset. Intercaste marriage, child marriage, marriage of a boy to maternal uncle's daughter, svayamvara marriage where the bride garlands her choice of a groom from among many aspirants were all in vogue. Memorials containing hero stones were erected for fallen heroes, and the concerned family received monetary aid for maintenance of the memorial. The presence of numerous mahasiddhikals or mastical, hero stones for a woman who accepted ritual death upon the demise of her husband indicates the popularity of sati among royalty. Ritual death by salakana and by jalasamadhi drowning in water were also practiced. Popular clothing among men was the use of two unrestricted garments, a dhoti as a lower garment and a plain cloth as upper garment while women wore saris with stitched petticoats. Turbans were popular with men of higher standing and people used umbrellas made with bamboo or reeds. Ornaments were popular among men and women and even elephants and horses were decorated. Men wore finger rings, necklaces hanasara and hanagalasara, bracelets kaduga and wristlets kaftkina. Women wore a nose jewel batu, nose ring muguti, bangles bale or kankana, and various types of necklaces hana gante sara and kati sutra. During leisure, men amused themselves with horse riding, watching wrestling bouts, cock fights and ram fights. There existed a large and well-organized network of schools for imparting higher education and these schools were known by various names such as Agraharas, Ghatakas, Brahmapura or Matha. Inscriptions mention schools of higher education at Saloji, Balagavi, Talagunda, Ihole, Arasikire and other places. <laughs> <laughs> Literature The Western Ganga rule was a period of brisk literary activity in Sanskrit and Kannada, though many of the writings are now considered extinct and are known only from references made to them. Chavundaraya's writing, Chavundaraya Purana or of 978 CE, is an early existing work in prose style in Kannada and contains a summary of the Sanskrit writings, Adipurana and Uttarapurana which were written a century earlier by Jinasena and Gunabhadra during the rule of Rashtrakuta Amogavarsha I. The prose, composed in lucid Kannada, was mainly meant for the common man and avoided any reference to complicated elements of Jain doctrines and philosophy. His writings seem to be influenced by the writings of his predecessor Adhikavi Pampa and contemporary Rana. The work narrates the legends of a total of 63 Jain proponents including 24 Jain Tirthankar, 12 Chakravartis, 9 Balabhadras, 9 Narayanas and 9 Pratinarayanas. The earliest postulated Kannada writer from this dynasty is King Dervinita of the 6th century. 
Kavirajamarga of 850 CE, refers to a Dervinita as an early writer of Kannada prose. Around 900 CE, Gunavarma I authored the Kannada works, Shudraka and Harivamsha. His writings are considered extinct but references to these writings are found in later years. He is known to have been patronized by King Araganga Nidamarga II. In Shudraka, he has favorably compared his patron to King Shudraka of ancient times. The great Kannada poet Rana was patronized by Chavundaraya in his early literary days. Rana's classic Parashurama Charite is considered a eulogy of his patron who held such titles as Samara Parashurama. Nagavarma I, a Brahmin scholar who came from Vengi in modern Andhra Pradesh late 10th century, was also patronized by Chavundaraya. He wrote Chandambudi Ocean of Prosody addressed to his wife. This is considered the earliest available Kannada writing in prosody. He also wrote one of the earliest available romance classics in Kannada called Karnataka Kadambari in sweet and flowing shampoo mixed verse and prose style. It is based on an earlier romantic work in Sanskrit by poet Bana and is popular among critics. Gajashtaka Hundred Verses on Elephants, a rare Kannada work on elephant management was written by King Shivamara II around 800 CE but this work is now considered extinct. Other writers such as Manasiga and Chandrabhata were known to be popular in the 10th century. In an age of classical Sanskrit literature, Madhava II brother of King Vishnugopa wrote a treatise Dataka Sutravriti which was based on an earlier work on erotics by a writer called Dataka. A Sanskrit version of Vadakatha, a commentary on Panini's grammar called Sabdavathara and a commentary on the 15th chapter of a Sanskrit work called Kiratarjunaya by poet Bharavi who was in Dervinita's court are ascribed to Dervinita. King Shivamara II is known to have written Gajamata Kalpana. Hemasena, also known as Vidya Dhanajaya authored Raghava Pandavya, a narration of the stories of Rama and the Pandavas simultaneously through puns. Gayachintamani and Shatrachudamini which were based on poet Bana's work Kadambari were written by Hemasena's pupil Vadibasimha in prose style, and Chavundaraya wrote Charitarasara. Architecture The Western Ganga style of architecture was influenced by the Pallava and Badami Shalukya architectural features, in addition to indigenous Jain features. The Ganga pillars with a conventional lion at the base and a circular shaft of the pillar on its head, the stepped vimana of the shrine with horizontal mouldings and square pillars were features inherited from the Pallavas. These features are also found in structures built by their subordinates, the Banas and Nolambas. The monolith of Gomateshwara commissioned by Chavundaraya is considered the high point of the Ganga sculptural contribution in ancient Karnataka. Carved from fine-grained white granite, the image stands on a lotus. It has no support up to the thighs and is 60 feet 18 meters tall with the face measuring 6.5 feet 2 .0 meters. With the serene expression on the face of the image, its curled hair with graceful locks, its proportional anatomy, the monolith size, and the combination of its artistry and craftsmanship have led it to be called the mightiest achievement in sculptural art in medieval Karnataka. It is the largest monolithic statue in the world. Their free-standing pillars called Mahasthamba or Brahmasthamba are also considered unique, examples of which are the Brahmadeva pillar and Tyagata Brahmadeva pillar. At the top of the pillar whose shaft cylindrical or octagonal is decorated with creepers and other floral motifs as the seated Brahma and the base of the pillar normally has engravings of important Jain personalities and inscriptions. Other important contributions are the Jain Basidases whose towers have gradually receding stories talas ornamented with small models of temples. These tiny shrines have in them engravings of Tirthankars Jain saints. Semicircular windows connect the shrines and decorative kurtamukha demon faces are used at the top. The Chavundaraya Basadi built in the 10th or 11th century, Chandragupta Basadi built in the 6th century and the monolithic of Gomateshwara of 982 are the most important monuments at Srivanabelagola. Some features were added to the Chandragupta Basadi by famous Hoysala sculptor Dasoha in the 12th century. The decorative door jams and perforated screen windows which depict scenes from the life of King Chandragupta Maurya are known to be his creation. The Panchakuta Basadi at Kambadahalli five-towered Jan temple of about 900 with a Brahmadeva pillar is an excellent example of Dravidian art. 
The wall niches here are surmounted by torana lintel with carvings of floral motifs, flying divine creatures and imaginary monsters ridden by yaksas attendants of saints while the niches are occupied by images of Tirthankars themselves. The Gangas built many Hindu temples with impressive Dravidian gopuras containing stucco figures from the Hindu pantheon, decorated pierced screen windows which are featured in the Mantapa hall, along with Saptamitrika carvings seven heavenly mothers. Some well-known examples are the Arakeshvara Temple at Holalore, Kapilaswara Temple at Man, Kolarama Temple at Kolar, Rameshvara Temple at Narasamangala, Nagareshvara Temple at Bigor and the Kalasvara Temple at Aralagup. At Talakad they built the Maralsvara Temple, the Araksvara Temple and the Patalsvara Temple. Unlike the Jain temples where floral frieze decoration is common, Hindu temples were distinguished by friezes slab of stone with decorative sculptures illustrating episodes from the epics and Puranas. Another unique legacy of the Gangas are the number of Virgil hero stones they have left behind, memorials containing sculptural details in relief of war scenes, Hindu deities, Saptamatrikas, Jain Tirthankars and ritual death such as the Dadahundi hero stone. Topic. Language The Western Gangas used Kannada and Sanskrit extensively as their language of administration. Some of their inscriptions are also bilingual in these languages. In bilingual inscriptions the formulaic passages stating origin myths, genealogies, titles of kings and benedictions tended to be in Sanskrit, while the actual terms of the grant such as information on the land or village granted, its boundaries, participation of local authorities, rights and obligations of the grantee, taxes and dues and other local concerns were in the local language. The usage of these two languages showed important changes over the centuries. During the first phase 350 to 725, Sanskrit copper plates dominated, indicating the initial ascendancy of the local language as a language of administration and the fact that majority of the records from this phase were Brahmadeya grants, grants to Brahmin temples. In the second phase 1000, lithic inscriptions in Kannada outnumbered Sanskrit copper plates, consistent with the patronage Kannada received from rich and literate Jains who used Kannada as their medium to spread the Jain faith. Recent excavations at Tumbula near Mysore have revealed a set of early copper plate bilingual inscriptions dated 444. The genealogy of the kings of the dynasty is described in Sanskrit while Kannada was used to describe the boundary of the village. An interesting inscription discovered at Biguru near modern Bangalore that deserves mention is the epigraph dated 890 that refers to a Bengaluru war. This is in Hale Kannada, Old Kannada language and is the earliest mention of the name of Bangalore city. The Western Gangas minted coins with Kannada and Nagari legends. The most common feature on their coins was the image of an elephant on the obverse and floral petal symbols on the reverse. The Kannada legend Bhadr, a royal umbrella or a conch shell, appeared on top of the elephant image. The denominations are the pagoda, weighing 52 grains, the phanam, weighing one tenth or one half of the pagoda, and the quarter phanams. Timeline The template below shows the timeline of Karnataka. Note the extent of time around 700 years the Ganga kingdom flourished. See also History of India History of South India Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Books Web